Have you ever been in a hurry when God wasn't? All throughout the Bible, we see God telling people to wait. Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years for a child. Jacob waited and worked for Rachel to be his wife for seven years and then worked for her for an additional seven more. Joseph waited 13 years for the fulfillment of his God-given dream that he would one day be a ruler. The children of Israel waited 40 years before entering into the Promised Land. David waited over 10 years from the time he was anointed to become king until he was actually crowned king. Noah waited 120 years from the time God told him to build the ark until the time of the flood actually occurred. So why does God make us wait on the dream he has placed inside of us? Here's the answer. What God does in us while we wait is more important than what we are waiting for. In 1998, I had rededicated my life to the Lord a year prior to that. And I was on fire for God. I was excited about what my new relationship with God looked like. And I was even more excited that I felt him calling and drawing me into the ministry. I didn't really know exactly what it meant, but I'll never forget what he showed me. He showed me this thing. I didn't even know it was a church, believe it or not. And it was called Mountain Movers in 1998. And he says this. He's in, this, in this vision that he gave me, he said, franchise the faith. Franchise the faith. I said, what are, what are we doing? Are we opening a McDonald's and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna share the gospel with every burger? We said, what, what do you mean franchise the faith? What is it? I saw a ministry with multiple locations. In 1998, this, this is the very beginning when people like Craig Rochelle and Andy Stanley, man, they were getting this thing going. I didn't even know that it was happening. What innovation, what creativity. I'd never even seen this happen. A ministry with multiple locations. I thought it was a business ministry. I thought it was like a YMCA on steroids. Like people are going to be getting saved. And man, we're going to deal with every area of life. And we're going to help people with this holistic come to Jesus kind of ministry. Come alongside the church. And we're going to save the whole world. Had this big, beautiful dream. It was way, way, way bigger. Way, way bigger than me. And from that moment, the very moment that God showed me that, man, I started trying to figure this thing out. Like, what is this? What? This is so crazy. This is so different. What is it? And I really started trying to figure out all the details. And you know, if God would have, in that moment, just handed me this church, all right, even where we are today, here we are 20 years later, guys. 20 years later, Mountain Movers, it's a church. Whoa, number one. Number two, 20 years later, and we're going loud and proud, big and strong in one location, baby. One location. That's not much of a franchise. What's that all about, right? But the picture is so clear in my heart, and it's, it's part of the vision. It's part of the dream. It's going to happen. But guess what? This pastor isn't ready yet. This pastor, his leadership capacity, his personal development, his faith walk, the journey, everything that God wants to bring me through and teach me and show me, I'm not there yet. If he would have handed me this ministry where it's at right now in 1998, I would not have been able to handle it. I don't know that I can handle it now to be honest with you, because it's bigger than me. It's God. It's God. He's moving mountains in people's lives. It's huge. But you see, there's a journey for each and every one of us that God wants to take us through. It's called life. And life is a culmination of seasons and assignments, chapters. He takes us from one place to the next. And in between each place is what we call a transition, baby. (laughs) And you got to have transitions. There has to be a bridge. If you want to get from one place to another, you're going to have to cross a bridge. And life being chucked full of these transitions should help us all to realize that it takes time. Look at somebody and say, it takes time. It It does. Look at somebody else who cares and say, it takes time. (laughs) It's, It's a process. It is a process. And God's not going to give you the dream like that. He's going to give it to you little by little 
by little by little. Why? Because you're not ready for it yet. Right? You may not even know God today. You may not even have a relationship with Christ today. Guess what? Oh, man, baby, I'm so excited about your next season. Your next season is so exciting. Little by little by little by little. It's a process. What is God trying to help you to grow through? Who is he trying to help you to become? What is he calling to? What is he calling you to in your ministry, in your life, in your marriage, in your walk, in your talk? What does he have for you? Whatever it is, he's going to give it to you little by little by little. Can you say it with me? Little by little by little. In the book of Exodus, we see a story of a nation called the nation of Israel who are being delivered from the hand of slavery. For 400 years, the children of Israel had been enslaved to the Egyptians. And we watch in Exodus as God totally delivers them out of that mindset and out of that nation. You go into the next book, and it's Deuteronomy, and that's where we're going to land today, Deuteronomy chapter 7. In this passage, God is now telling them what the future is for that nation. He begins to explain to them, hey, you're no longer enslaved. You're no longer bound up with the junk you were bound up before, but now I'm moving you. I'm transitioning you. There's going to be a change in your life in order to possess the promised land, the land of Canaan. If you have your word, go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22, and it says this. The Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you. Here we go. Little by little. Who's going to do it? God is. It didn't even say that you, this mighty nation of Israel, this enslaved people that had the mindset of failure because they'd been in slavery all these years, he didn't say it was going to be them. He said, I, God, am going to drive out the nations before you. But here's what he was telling them. I'm not going to do it all at once. I'm not going to take you from the point of salvation to this strong, unbelievable, unshakable, unmovable person of God all in one shot. You see, did you know that Brad told you in 98 God gave him a dream, but it was 97 when he gave his life to Christ. One year later, God gives him this big dream. Two years later, God tells him to go to college where he meets me and his life is all fulfilled. No, just kidding. Oh, the heavens were singing. The angels were rejoicing. It was a process. God puts Mm. this dream in his heart. In 2000, he comes to college. In 2001, we get married. In 2007, we start this thing called Mountain Movers Church. It wasn't what he ever thought it was going to be, but God had a process he needed to take Brad through. He wasn't ready in 98, but God wanted him to be focused on his future. He didn't want him looking back at all the junk of his past. You see, he was dealing with a lot of nastiness from his past because he had lived a life for himself for many, 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 many years. He had a lot of things that he needed to get over, a lot of baggage he needed to drop, a lot of things he needed to let go of in order to possess his future. So did the children of Israel. Look at the rest of this verse. He says, I'm going to drive them out ahead of you little by little. You will not clear them away all at once. Otherwise, the wild animals would multiply too quickly for you. See, God knew what they didn't know. And that is the easy thing in their minds would have been, God, wipe out the nations ahead of us. Let us go in immediately and possess the land. He said, if I did that, the animals in this territory would actually multiply faster than you, and they would overtake and destroy you. He actually needed them to grow, not only spiritually, but physically. They needed to populate and have more people in order to take care of the land he was going to give them. That was beyond their comprehension. Sometimes in your life, when God begins to speak into your life, when you say, yes, man, I want a relationship with Jesus. You can't even comprehend what God's going to do with you down the road. Because all you can see is the battle right in front of you. The very next day after saying yes to Jesus, trying to do battle with your flesh and get rid of the old junk in your life, when it keeps creeping up over and over and over, and you're like, is this even possible? I have to change the way I think. Because what keeps coming out of my mouth doesn't glorify God, but it's all about the way that I think. See, it's a process. God wants to grow you in this process of development of your faith, and he wants to transition you from one point to the next. Your next season, your next assignment, it's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Your life, again, is a culmination of seasons and assignments. You're going from one place in your faith to the next, to the next, to the next. And between all of them are transitions. It's not a matter of if you're going to move into a new season. 
It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Look at what Scripture says in verse 1. It says this, When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are about to enter and occupy. When? It doesn't say if the Lord your God brings you into the land you're about to enter and occupy. It says when you're about to enter the land that he's given you. Another word for occupy is possess. Get that deep in your heart. God says this. It's inevitable. It's life. You're going to move into the next season. The question is, when is it going to happen? And what does God have for me there? I know you're asking yourself, God, what do you have for me in this next season of my life? And I want to prove to you through Scripture that God does have something for you in this this next season. And it's found in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. Say masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so listen to this, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So we can do the good things that he planned for you and for me long ago. You see, before you were ever even born, God had your journey all mapped out. And then you got into this life and you started making decisions and you just messed it all up right? We just mess it all up. God is so powerful and he's so sovereign. Best of all, God has a plan. Listen to this. There's no season. There's no assignment that you will ever encounter that God didn't already know about. You get a bad report from the doctor. God knew this was going to happen. You get a promotion at work. God knew that was going to happen, right? You've been believing God for so long to be able to have children, and then it happens. God knew that was going to happen. You've been believing and praying for a long time to be able to have children, and it doesn't happen. God knew that was going to happen too. There's no transition. There's no season. There's no chapter. There's no assignment that God doesn't already know about. The question we have to ask ourselves is, when this season happens, God, what do you have for me to do for you. You see, it's not about you. It's about him. It's about who he is and what he wants to do in and through your life that matters most. He wants to be glorified in your life. We are on assignment. We do not belong to ourselves, but we belong to God. We were bought with a price. With the blood of Jesus, we have been bought and purchased and paid in full, that we would belong to him, that we would live for him, and that we would serve almighty God. So this next season, guess what? God has good plans for you to be used according to his purpose. These things he planned for you long, long ago. But guess what? It's not going to all happen at one time. It's not, he's not going to just hand you the whole kit and caboodle, the whole thing all in one shot. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give you possession of the land that he has for you, the plan, the purpose that he has for you. He's going to give it to you, but he's going to give it to you, say it with me, little by little by little by little. That's right. The rest of that verse and, and verse number one says this, he will clear away many nations ahead of you. The Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, Perizzites, Jebusites, all the ites, all right? The seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. Point number two is this. If the next season is a little more than you can handle, it's probably God. Listen to me. Think about what I just said. If the next season is a little more than you think you can handle, it's probably God. You see, there's a misnomer, a myth, if you will, that's been said now for years and years and years, and it's this. God will never give you more than you are able to bear. I want to tell you. Hogwash. You're exactly right. It is hogwash. That is not found in the Word of God anywhere at all. Let me ask you a question right now. How many of you are facing something in your life right now that is more than you can bear on your own? Right here. Let me tell you. The rest of you guys are liars. Yeah. (laughs) If you're not, you're about to. Come on, people. God is going to allow you to go through moments in your life where you say literally, you hear yourself saying it out of your mouth, God, I can't handle this. God, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. God, why are you allowing this to happen to me? God, when are you going to heal me? God, why? God, why? Listen to me. 
The reason God will allow you to go through more than you're able to handle is because he wants you and he wants me to depend upon him. If we, uh, if we could do it on our own, why do we need him? If we can do it all without him, we have no need for that relationship. God wants us to depend upon him. See, the Bible tells us in James, I want to read this to you, James 1.17. It says this, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heaven. He will never change, casting a shifting shadow. Last week we talked about James 1. And in this chapter, it's all about trials. When you read the first verse, it says, in all of your trials, take joy. And you think to yourself, that makes absolutely no sense. Why am I supposed to be happy about going through hard times? Why am I supposed to be happy? Well, it didn't say happy. There's a difference between joy and happiness. See, happiness is a momentary, I feel happy. I'm excited. Something good just happened to me. Joy is a state of being. It's a state of being in your life, understanding that no matter what I'm going through, God is in control, and this life here is only temporary. You see, the gift that God is talking about in this passage in James is actually trials. You see, the gift that is perfect coming down from the Father of lights is trials in our life. Now, I want you to think to yourself, why would God want me to have to go through trials? Well, you see, God wants you to be strong. God wants you to grow in your faith. God wants you to conquer battles little by little by little, and as you do, get stronger. If you never had to go through anything hard in your life, you wouldn't be able to conquer anything really big because the struggles in our life actually make us stronger. And if you can look back over your own life, as I can my own, And I can remember some of the hardest moments of my life. I can look back and say, God, I don't ever want to walk that path again. But through that hard time, I grew in my faith. Through that hard transition, I become a different person. Through that hard transition, I'm able to minister to somebody else because I walked through those difficult times. You see, the gift from God that he's going to use to grow you oftentimes is going to be a trial in a transition that's going to cause you to have to depend upon him 100%. Look at verse 2. It says, when the Lord your God hands these nations over to you, on a rewind, when the Lord hands these nations over to you, that means that the fight is fixed. It means you've already won. But there's a little effort that has to take place in this journey, all right? You're going to have to fight it out. Listen to what Scripture says. When the Lord your God hands you these nations and you conquer them, listen to what you must do. Completely, say completely. Completely. What percentage, we have any mathematicians in the room, what percentage would you say completely would be? 100%. He told the Israelites, when you go in, when I hand you the land, when I give you the battle, when I hand them over to you, I want you to completely, 100% destroy them. Don't do this. Don't make treaties. Don't, don't, don't make negotiations happen with them. Don't show them any mercy. You want to know what mercy is? It's when we don't get what we deserve. So what he's saying is when you enter this season, this next season of life, and I'm handing you this land for your next season, listen, you're going to have to understand, don't negotiate with the terrorists of your soul. Don't make treaties and give that season what it deserves. Do you know the, the difference between an inheritance and a possession? You see, if... if If I'm your father, and I'm not, but if I was, and I I gave you an inheritance, I would be leaving you something probably for nothing, right? I would just be leaving it to you for you to have and maybe even pass on to your children and your children's children. But a possession is different. You see, with an inheritance, it's something that is given to you. A possession is something that you take for yourself, and it doesn't come without a fight. You see, there's some seasons in our life that are long overdue for a can kicking. Are you listening to me this morning? 
There's some parts of our lives that are way, way past due for a butt whooping. Can I say that in church? It's long overdue, and it's like, deal with it. God is saying, I have this season for you, but you're stuck right here in this previous season, and you can't fight your way out. I've got something for you over here, but you can't handle the transition. Listen, I've told you to 100% annihilate this season. Listen, that could be a lot of things. It could be a relationship where God has said, I want you to sever it. This isn't building you up to who you're called to be in Christ. I want you to sever this relationship. I'm not talking about a marriage. I'm talking about a a relationship prior to marriage and God's saying this isn't building you up and pushing you towards Christ. It's not the person I have for you. And you're resisting and you're pushing against that and you just won't give it up and you're just holding on to something that doesn't belong to you. That's not the season he wants you in. That's not the person he wants you with. It could be a relationship. It could be an addiction. Maybe it's doubt. Maybe you're sitting here, you're tangled up, and you're negotiating with doubt. Maybe you're convincing yourself that it's okay to sit here and stew as to why it's okay to not believe. When God said he was going to do something in your life, and you're sitting here, and you're sulking, you're like, God, but I, but, but, but I see this, and I see that, and I see this, and I hear this, and I do, and listen, sit in the chair. God, I'm going to sit in the chair, but I'm done. Okay, so let's just figure this out. And you're sitting here. God's closed these doors in your life, and you're running from door to door to door that he's told you are closed, and you're trying to pry these doors open when those doors are not to be opened in your life. Stop it. 100% annihilate, destroy anything that is going to hold you back from going from this season to the next. You have to annihilate it. Like a pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. I, I just can't. I just can't cut the cord on this part of my life. I just. I just can't get through this. You have to. You have to annihilate. You have to possess the land. Listen. Listen to what Scripture told them. He was talking to the children of Israel. In verse 3, this is the instruction he gave them. He said, you must not intermarry with them, because this was the temptation. This This was what God's fear was for his people, that they would move into the land he had given them, and they would begin to intermarry. God was trying to keep a a, a bloodline that was set apart for his own special purpose, that Christ would come through, that God would be glorified through it all. He was afraid that they were going to intermarry with the enemy. Is anybody listening to me today? He said, don't let your daughters and your sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. There's something in your season, and it's pulling you away. It's drawing you away. It's getting in between you and God. It's a wedge that is severing your relationship with God. God is saying, destroy it, sever it, get rid of it. You have to reject passivity in these situations. Verse 5 says, this is what you must do. You must break down their pagan altars and shatter their sacred pillars. Cut down their Asherah poles and burn their idols, for you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. All of the people on the earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. And like so, God has called you. You're special to him, and he has chosen you for such a time as this to get through this season, through transition, to the next season, to the next assignment he has for you. But you just keep allowing those parts of the current season to remain when they don't need to remain. It'd be like if you're walking down the beach. How many of you guys like ice cream? Who doesn't like ice cream? Unless you're lactose intolerant, and I feel really sorry for you because ice cream is wonderful. You're walking down the beach, and you've got this vanilla ice cream. Oh, man, it's good. You're just enjoying it. It's a hot day. It's so good. You just got it. You just walked away from the ice cream stand. You're walking down the beach, and a seagull comes along and plops a big, nice surprise right on top of your ice cream cone. You see, some of you in the season you're in right now, you're like, eh, just kind of wipe that off a little bit. It's all good. Just a little bit of bird poop never hurt nobody, right? Just a little bit. What are you, crazy? You don't eat poop cream ice cream. Well, what's the matter with you? You don't do that. You throw the ice cream in the trash and you go get a new one. Get into a new season. Get rid of the junk. 
My kids are like, Dad, you're just such a killjoy. They don't really say killjoy, but that's the word I use. They're like, man, you're, just, you, you're killing us, Dad. I mean, why can't I watch this YouTube video? Man, it shows me how to do all this cool stuff on the game. I'm like, because it has cussing in it, maybe? We're like, Dad, it's just a little bit of cussing. Okay, I see. And what about this video, Dad? It's just like a short sex scene, just a little bit of nudity, right? I'm like, what's the big deal, yo? What's the big deal, Dad? What's the big deal? Hey, I get it. What's a little bit of junk in your life when God's trying to get you through the next season? Hey, how about I put just a little bit of poop in your brownies next time we bake them up? Enjoy. Come on, eat up. Poop brownies. Mwah. Appetit. Right there. Huh? What's wrong? And, and I'm not saying it for the record. We may have done this before. I'm not saying that it's been done, but it is 99.9% possible that we have put poop in our kids' brownies because, hey, they need to learn, right? What's wrong with just a little bit of poop in the brownies? God's saying there's a problem, okay? There's a problem with the season that you're in. You need to 100% annihilate anything and everything, even people that don't belong. You're surrounding yourself with these negative people, and they are telling you to do things. They're encouraging you to come away from what God's told you in your season. They're not feeding what God's promised you. They're pulling you. They're drawing you away separate yourself from these people and get around greatness. Get around people that are going to push you higher and higher and higher towards Christ. That's what we're going to do in August when we go back to life groups, right? That's right. That's right. Amen. So guys, get this deep in your heart. Get it deep in your soul. Listen to this promise because he's going to do this in your life little by little by little by little. Verse 7, the Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations. He didn't choose you because you have some extraordinary, wonderful gift and because you're, you're just you're supernatural in all of your ways. He loves taking seemingly impossible situations and people that are ordinary, and he likes to do extraordinary things with them and in them. Are you listening to me today? He says this. He says... I want you to just simply know this, that the Lord loves you in verse 8. And he was keeping the oath that he had sworn. Verse 9, understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those, listen, who love him and obey his commands. Obey his commands. Do what God has told you to do. Be bold. Be courageous. Reject fear. Reject doubt, right? Come against it with everything you've got and move from the season that you're in to the next assignment. Go through that transition and be who God has called you to be. He's not going to give it to you all at once. How do you win a war? Battle by battle by battle, by battle. You win this one, and then you win this one, and then you win this one. It's a maturing process. It's about you becoming who he wants you to be. It's about you grabbing hold of who he's called you to be and and, and doing what he's called you to do. But he's not going to do it all at once. He's going to do it little by little by little by little. And eventually, one day, You're going to have the capacity to do bigger and better things that you never even imagined God could have ever used you in. But it's because you became the person that he wanted you to be, and now you can do it. Right now, we're we're not multiple locations. But guess what? One day, we will be. But guess what? Pastor Brad still has stuff he has to learn as a leader. I still have some more mistakes I need to make. I still have some more really, really hard prayers that I need to pray. I still have a few more trials, a few more letdowns, a few more heartaches that I need to work through so that I can build my faith and realize that the struggle makes me stronger because there's going to be mountains that I've never moved before. There's going to be mountains so big that I've never even thought it was possible to move such mountains. But because because God did it here and here and here and here, he builds me up, he strengthens me, and I know that eventually he'll do it here as well. God's faithful, guys. Let him grow you. Let him grow you to be stronger through the struggles one day at a time, one season at a time, what assignment 
at a time. Let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every season. We thank you for every assignment. We thank you, God, for every transition that you take us through. Father, we pray today, God, that you would help us to realize it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Help us to realize that as we move into this next season, Father God, that if if this season is a little bit more than we can handle, it's probably you. Help us, God, in these moments not to make covenant, but to conquer. Help us to completely annihilate those areas of our lives that we need to annihilate so that we can be completely and wholly set apart for you and for the works, the good works that you have planned for us long, long ago. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to talk to you today. If you're the person that says in your heart, you know, if I was to die today, I, I don't know that I would go to heaven. I don't have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus. But I want to. I want to make heaven my home. I want to know that my eternity is secure and I'm safe in the arms of God. If that's you, I want to tell you we love you and you are why we do church. And if you would allow us, we would like to pray with you right where you are as a church family for you to receive Christ right now. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're in this room and that's you, would you just raise your hand today? If you're online, just say, that's me, I'm all in. Would you do that? Amen. Raise your hand nice and high. We want to pray with you right where you are. Father, church, can we pray this prayer together for those that have made this decision in their lives? Pray this prayer with me. Father, I love you. Thank you for Jesus. I know I've let you down in so many ways. Forgive me, God. Cleanse my heart. Make me new. I believe Jesus. He is the Son of God. It's only through Him that I can be saved. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. Help me to live for you today, according to your word, never to be the same again. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, you can give him a hand. If you just prayed that prayer, you are now entering a new season. You're entering a transition, and we want to help you make that transition a little easier. So we have a gift for you. It's called your Next Step Kit. It's in a green bag. If you're in-house, as you leave on the left, if you're online, direct message us your address. It'll be in the mail in the morning. It's got a Bible, and it's got a message from Brad and I helping you to know, what do I do now? What is my very next step? Put your hands together one more time for those who just made that decision for Christ. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.